make some noise for all these wonderful people over here as they join us on stage for the panel discussion. Noise may kar raho, aap log bhi please mujhe join karo. And bajaye zor se tali, please, ladies and gentlemen, as they all come over here and join us on stage. Hello. Well, as you know, I have a very difficult role here today. Uh, I have a great, great panel. Uh, each one coming from some fabulous sectors, years of experience. So I have 24 minutes and 53 seconds, but let me give you guys some insight and try to bring out the best of this. So we're gonna quickly start with Mansi. As you know, Mansi earlier in the day obviously presented a report. She's done a lot of insight and understands the space. So Mansi, we'll start with you. And if you can tell us the trends that you're seeing across industries when it comes to media convergence. Uh, so thanks, thanks, Akshara, for that question. So yeah, I'm wearing the researcher hat right now as I talk about it. So I think very clearly, uh, let's let's just in one line understand what convergence in media is. It's nothing but traditional and digital channels coming together. And uh, you know, there's a lot of tech which goes into it because there's integration, right? Now when we, the, the set of clients that we are working with, there are four cohorts that we see. So you know, one who have almost moved completely to digital campaigns, digital channels. One who are using a mix of two. One who recognize the impact of digital marketing but are still not there. They would still want to go the traditional way. And the fourth cohort is where we have started seeing you know, a couple of clients going the blended strategy way, right? So we have uh, clients at the tele in the telecommunication space and without quoting anyone's name, but uh, yeah, you know, you know they, they target, the, the, the TG is targeted in a way that, you know, uh, for, for instance, they would use a mix of FTA, CTV, and digital channels, you know, basis the TG they want to target. So if it's a 2G, 3G customer, it'll have one mix. If it's a 4G, 5G customer, it'll have another mix, for instance, right? Now, how, how is it helpful? So let's, let's just understand the traditional and digital media. Um, let's say we talk about TV and print. It has a wide reach, but it's one way. Digital, let's take the example of social media. It helps targeted marketing. At the same time, there's a lot of interaction and engagement which happens. So you know, blend, blending the two makes a lot of sense because it turns out to be very effective, right? The the only challenge is you know when you are having a mix of platforms, you know, a blended strategy. You need to ensure that the messaging is unified and consistent. You cannot have a brand with two different messages, you know, on two different platforms. So. We have seen a few brands who probably just, you know, pick up one ad from the traditional media, just cut short, you know, take a clip and put it on the digital uh, space, which doesn't really help. It creates a lot of confusion in the minds of consumers, right? So I think the challenge here is unified messaging. The second is tech integration because you need to have those investments. And third is, you know, matrix. So a lot of people are still struggling with how do you measure impact when it comes to digital marketing, right? So that's the third one. But uh, all in all, you know, we do see our clients working towards blended strategy because in the end, it's a win-win situation for both, right? So the consumer needs an omni-channel experience. At the same time, brands need, uh, brands need reach and engagement. So what better way but, you know, blended strategy? Fantastic. I think that's great. And I mean, going straight to how a client actually implements it. So I'm going to ask two people who've done some phenomenal work. So Prasant and Amarnath, we had a lovely conversation. Um, you both come from industries that could be that could be looked at as a traditional point of view, but have kind of blended it beautifully. So what I would start is with either one of you. To, and, and I remember, I, Amarnath, if you want to, we had a lovely discussion about the insights you had. So we'd love your hands-on experience about the challenges, how you blended it, insights, so everyone can go home with some great. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and, and, and thank you so much for setting up the context. Uh, clearly, we are in the cohort four uh, in terms of blended uh, sort of comps. Um, but it's important to acknowledge two facts uh, and just building on uh, to that context that today, uh, as she said, we are living in an in a ecosystem which is like an omniverse uh, because consumers are shopping in brick and mortar. At the same time, they are shopping online. So it's a seamless integration of information that needs to flow into them. But what's important is to clearly identify, as Sridip said in the morning during his discussion, 
that is not one consumer cohort. You can't say 15 to 25 housewives and that's how sharp I'm gonna target. No, it's not about that anymore. It is India within India and within that India, who are you micro-targeting to? Let me give an example. You know, our, what at Cycle Agarbati, our core communication line is everyone has a reason to pray. Now prayer has different meanings for different consumer cohorts. The housewife who lights two sticks of Cycle Agarbati in the morning, she prays for health, wealth, and happiness. And that's what our brand 3-in-1 stands for. The youngster who's praying for the last wicket, you know, that, that one crucial wicket in the last over, or that six in the last over, we are part of the cricketing circle. We are, for about a decade, we, we stand for the third umpire. So Cycle Agarbati always, uh, when the third umpire signal uh, you know, goes up in key matches of India, you have the cycle Agarbati standing with it. So we also believe that even the younger generation has a reason to pray. The only thing that's changed is, is that they are praying for India, they are praying for their needs, and you know, different, different cohorts play for different things. The third thing I think which has uh, really changed is the entire ecosystem of e-commerce and quick commerce, which has really, really boomed. Today, consumers are paying a premium for convenience. And it's important for us to realize that fact. And hence, we are also available in this channel. And festive season becomes one of the most critical uh, forms of communication to them. At that point of time, we dial up spirituality. We dial up festivities. Again, it stands for everyone as a reason to pray. But what you dial up during that moment is very, very critical. And, 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 and just for information uh, for this audience, we also experiment in our D2C platform, which is cycle.in. So any new product we launch, we experiment on D2C, and then we actually expand it to e-commerce and then to brick and mortar. So for example, during this festive season, we are launching, uh, we have a brand called Nevedia, Nevedia Cup Samrani, which is in the cup format which you light. Uh, we are launching three new fragrances of it. We have rose uh, and, and jasmine and one, and one more, which we are launching this festive season. We've piloted, taken a lot of feedback from consumers in our D2C platform before launching on e-commerce in this festive season and then scaling it up. So it's important, uh, while it's important to have consistency in messaging, but at the same time, it's important to listen to the consumer, evolve our products, evolve our comps, and then go micro sharply targeted to these consumers across different platforms. And to, and, and finally, consistency is the key. You have to have a blended messages. Uh, it cannot have distracted messages across different platforms. Wonderful. I think when you when you think of FMCG, you think of really smart marketing. You you know you hear this often, and that's why I actually wanted to go to Prashant next. Is you're in a very interesting field, right? Money view. How do you use a blended technology? How do you use blended marketing? Um. Uh, firstly, good good afternoon to everyone. And uh, thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, I think Mansi also, uh, Mansa also set the context uh, very well. See, um, I don't think that uh, there is any traditional, non-traditional media per se in terms of media mix. Yes, it's there when you do your media planning. But um, if I look at it, I think consumers now have multiple places to consume information from, right? And um, I think that one point uh, that we make, I, I think something that we stay very true to is you build for that particular platform. You don't uh, try to force fit what you've created for a larger communication to work for a particular platform. You build as per what is working on that particular platform, <clears throat> right? So whether it's a TV ad <clears throat> that you're trying to uh, sort of you know merge and make into something that you can run on social media, it doesn't really work. Right, and if I talk about uh, uh, the, I would say more than the media being converged between traditional and uh, the new age media, it's also about the product experience being merged with what you're talking about, because I think UI UX um, that has to speak the same tone that you're talking about on tr whether it's traditional, whether it's uh, new age, uh, whatever you are talking about, right? Um, I think an example, uh, so I can talk from both my experiences, both at Flipkart and at MoneyView. So at Flipkart, I think we are at big billion days right now, and I think that is a prime example of, uh, you know, all media channels working together towards a common sort of a message to the consumer, and he consumes it from multiple places, some which are a lot more targeted, some which are talking about uh, macroeconomic reasons why people shop during this time, right? So they address that. And when I come to MoneyView, I would say that uh, I think 
Uh, a seamless experience, for example, is that we recently, while we were predominantly in the personal loan category, we've also launched a slew of products in the past few uh, weeks, past few months, uh, ranging from digital gold to FD marketplace and all of that. A learning in digital gold, because we have uh, an association with Caraclean, for example, is that a consumer can buy digital gold from us and they can go and exchange it at the Caraclean counter and buy jewelry from it. Right, so I think, uh, so the communication also has to follow the path that the consumer is taking in terms of their purchase journey. So uh, I think my advice uh, to sum it all would be uh, to not really look at media as traditional versus digital. I think you should look at where consumer conversations are happening the most, where are your conversions actually taking place and having an impact there. It doesn't really matter whether it is traditional or digital. And I would actually say that um, a common message for all media channels uh, sometimes works. Uh, sometimes you'll have to have different nuances of the same message, right? So I think it varies from situation to situation, industry to industry. So there's no playbook per se, but, but yeah, that, that's been my experience. I think that's so incredible because, um, and what I love is this entire conversation is evolving where some of us said it should be blended. And then we realize there's only one pot, right? There's only one pot. So how do you optimize? Do you use a uniform message or do you sometimes need to personalize, right? Now yeah. coming to the next two people are going to tell us everyone wants to do everything, but there are budget restrictions. How do you optimize? How does data help do that? Uh, and I'm going to put two people to answer that because that definitely is insights they have. Um, I'm going to have Anuj, um, definitely. And I am going to have Ishan. We had a lovely conversation about optimizing and how do you see ROI and conversion? So over to you both. Sure. Uh, so I think a couple of very interesting points. Uh, I think the last one that you just mentioned, right, that you can't pick uh, the same message across different uh, aspects. So, you know, from uh, our perspective, so I come from a small company called Xiaomi. Uh, we've just been around for about 10 years. Uh, <laughs> Now we do phones, we do TVs, uh, uh, and we've obviously been uh, blessed with the response that we've seen in the country. Uh, but a lot of focus that has gone in from a marketing perspective has been uh, following the consumer. Uh, in the last 10 years, obviously, we've seen a lot of changes in connectivity. We had 4G coming in, we had 5G coming in, and we had to keep pace with each uh, change that was coming in. And obviously, sometimes, you know, we have to sell the tools to be the cat catalyst for the rest of the, the industries to kind of catch on. Uh, so I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, we started off in 2014, and till 2017, uh, our spends in marketing was actually zero. Uh, so we did not really spend a single uh, penny, uh, except for obviously the salaries for a few of us uh, in marketing. But the idea was at that point, uh, and this is going with you know how a consumer picks up uh, a particular device. Uh, what is the consumer decision journey? And you have to follow that journey with the right message, with the right medium. And uh, in 2014, uh, one aspect obviously is that you know we didn't really have money to spend. But the second aspect was at that point, and I don't know how many of you guys were having say smartphones in 13, 2014. Any raise of hands? Not too many. I think a, a few of uh, the folks were still in school at that point. Uh, so at that point, what we realized was it was only the enthusiasts who were getting in there. So what we could do is just deliver to those people, guide them through their decision journey. And essentially, we were able to do that with just influencing the influencers. And at that point, it was the technology media. Right? So you had the Times of India's of the world and Economic Times of the world and then follow it up with a quick uh, social one-two. Right? So it worked really well there. But then, of course, over the years, uh, the entire market has matured quite a lot. Uh, we had to obviously get into different phases. But even today, uh, what we do is for every product that we have, so whether we are selling a 10,000 rupee you know, disruptive 5G device or whether we're selling a 1 lakh rupee, say, a, a, a phone that comes with a Leica lenses, right? so just path-breaking uh, photography, we understand the consumers and then follow that journey. So how do they discover? What are they looking at at each point? And you know, unfortunately for us, uh, every decision 
uh, whether you're buying a 10,000 rupee device or a one lakh rupee device, uh, people spend almost four to five weeks to decide, right? And when they start off, what are they looking for? Where should we be? Uh, so, you know, a very quick one, it's normally for us, it'll start off with PR, we'll start off with some influencers and then guide them through different uh, paths. So whether it's on Flipkart, I mean, today, Big Billion Day, I don't know what I'm doing here, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty close there. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are points where we, at each step, uh, what they want to hear, what are the questions that they will have, and we try and proactively put that down. So our, our planning, for example, if we've got a launch right now planned for December, the planning is already there for each step, and it al always starts with the consumer. And we are marketeers. Uh, we have only one audience, which is the consumer. Uh, what are they going to ask for? What are the hurdles that they'll have at each step? Uh, and essentially, how do you kind of convert them? So we are looking from a pure consumer decision journey perspective, see what works, and obviously keep iterating there. Fantastic. Aren't we grateful that in spite of the big billion sale, they're all here? So guys, we, we need a, a, a round of clap for them. We really appreciate this insight from each one of you. Going to Ishan, uh, of course, you know, we've... Uh, We've spoken about numbers and optimization, and we had a lovely, lovely conversation. So I'd like to go deep into data, and I think then flow into uh, learning. Because, I mean, we'd love to know your learnings, your insight. How do you make the most of the budget? Um, and like you said, you didn't go all. You kind of very clearly focused on one space. And maybe you can give the pros and cons of each. And Sure, thank you, Akanksha. And uh, I'll just take the cue forward from uh, what some of my fellow friends uh, mentioned over here. So we talked about keeping a consistent and integrated approach across channels. We talked about uh, you know ch treating each channel on its own merit. You know, treating performance and brand instead of you know looking at it, looking at them in silos. We consider both of them as a spectrum and see what works for when what works for who, and then uh, Anuj very rightly mentioned that how at each step of the consumer's purchase journey, uh, you know, the media mix has to be aligned to where the consumer is. So now the next logical question after this is that as a marketer, uh, which consumer do I uh, target through which channel, right? So what is the media mix? How do I decide on it? I know that I need to have a consistent approach. I need to have a personalized approach for different segments. Now how do I decide on that? So um, at Credit B, uh, we deal with a lot of data. We uh, are a fintech platform that lends to uh, professionals. So every day we get, uh, you know, close to 50,000 new uh, applications, and then you know some of them convert to take loans. Now, when we are dealing with uh, such a huge chunk of data, uh, the first thing that is very important for us is to create the right segments. Um, unless we uh, do the segmentation right, uh, everything else that follows is going to fail. And uh, we often take a reverse engineering approach where uh, essentially we look at our CRM data, we look at uh, our consumers who have already taken loans from us and we try to create a cross-segment, cross-channel segmentation of those consumers to see that how each of these cohorts are coming from different channels and create segments accordingly. And then we try to dwell deeper and see that what does the data tell us. There are certain consumers for which, let's say, a channel A could be driving the conversion directly versus there could be another cohort where, uh, you know, that same channel A would be assisting the conversion but not exactly be the last mile or the last touch of conversion. Now, the insight that I get out of this particular uh, data point is that while the channel A is a brilliant performance channel or a direct sale channel for the first cohort. For the second cohort, I could maybe top it up uh, as a brand channel where I can maybe build top of the funnel and maybe use it in a discretionary way for my performance spend while I use another channel to convert that user, whether it's my CRM channel or another acquisition performance channel, just taking an example. So um, the idea, of course, is to identify the right segments, segment them in a way where the variance of the channel conversion in that particular, uh, across the segments is uh, quite varied or quite high. And then use different channel combinations and permutations, if I may say, across different cohorts to get the best conversion. So that's an approach that we usually take uh, when it comes to our channel mix to identify how do we optimize our conversion. And I think that's, that's what works for us. Wonderful. Thank you. So we're, we're seeing different perspectives. Not last, 
but a very, very important to people who work across clients. And uh, just five minutes extra is what we took, so hopefully it was worth it. Thank you each, each member here. Thank you for taking the time out, and I'm sure we all learned a lot.